yeah, thank you, Ping, for the introduction and uh, mm, very nice to see everyone here. Uh, I'm Bo, I'm a new faculty member at Georgia Tech and my research is mainly about um, computer graphics and the physics simulation. Um, so uh, before I get started, um, introducing you the technical uh, algorithm. So let me first uh, uh, play a few videos, um, which are very, it's a very typical common practice for computer graphics people. So the first video is about cherry on water. The second video is about uh, soup bubble and its burst process. The third video is about um, house shoe vortex. This is smoke and the vortices behind uh, the rigid body. Uh, this animation is about a kind of fluid called ferrofluid. It's um, the interaction between uh, magnetic materials, the external magnetic field, and the soft body, and of course, fluid body. So the interaction of them. Um, this is a video about uh, drone simulation and optimization. A video about uh, topology optimization for biomimetic materials. And the last video is a YouTube video. So we capture this. We actually just download the uh, video. This is about a uh, vortex rotation uh, for a uh, uh, soap bubble, right? And here's another one. So the trick here is only half of this video is real. And the other half is synthesized with our machine learning algorithm. I don't know if you can tell which half is real, which is not. So this, yeah, these few videos um, summarize my uh, research crossing computer graphics and uh, computational physics. Um, so I mainly study uh, the simulation and uh, optimization algorithms for complex physical systems. Um, my research focus is among three components, uh, simulation, design, and uh, uh, discovery. So if we uh, look at, um, <clears throat> if we look at them um, part by part, so we can think of them as to uh, figure out the relation among the uh, system property, the system model, and the system behavior. So like these three circles here. Um, and uh, my uh, main focus is to develop algorithm to figure out the relation among these three. So I will give you uh, three examples to show why they are related to simulation design and discovery. So for simulation, um, the, the main paradigm uh, we are looking at is to uh, figure out the system's behavior. For example, the dynamics evolution, the geometric transition and topological transition based on two observations. First is a property like the material property, the shape property, and also the governing equation. So this no models plus no properties, and we wanted to predict the system's future behavior. For design problem, it's about switching uh, two of these components from the input and output. So for a design problem, the typical algorithm is given a known model. Um, like we know the governing equation when designing a soft body system and given some uh, known behavior, some target behavior, uh, like we have a specific objective in our design problem. And we want to figure out the system's property, for example, the structure, the shape, size, topology. We wanted to use the inverse uh, differentiable simulation to get this structure based on our uh, model and behavior. And for discovery, it's about further uh, switching 
two of these components. So the um, pipeline is given observed behavior and observed property. For example, when we look at a video uh, of fluid, uh, we know how the uh, material is uh, transported on on the on the on the screen, right? And uh, uh, we know the um, size and the shape of this uh, material domain. And we what we wanted to figure out is the governing equation, mm. and uh, the like the conservation law, the constraint model. So we wanted to use machine learning algorithms to reason the models behind these observations. So this, yeah, these three uh, diagrams basically summarize the uh, main focus of my uh, uh, research. And uh, the main computational challenges uh, we are addressing among these three uh, steps are mainly about the curse of dimensionality. And so this is a word that we are typically uh, using to describe um, computational problems in high dimension. Right, and uh, here, so for the three types of problems, simulation, dis design, and discovery, they actually have different meanings, and I will give you detailed uh, explanation of them. Um, so my solution is to come up with structure representations to tackle the first of dimensionality challenge in these different, um, simula uh, different computational problems. So um, I will give you uh, a few examples for each category, and I'll start with simulation. So for simulation, so the first uh, uh, simulation problem I want to talk about today is bubble dynamics. We want to simulate very thin soap bubbles and their, evolu their color, shape, and the topological evolution. Um, so if we look at soap bubbles in the real world, um, there are a few things that we must care about. The first is flow, right? You, if you look at the, the motion of bubble um, on a thin film, it's very turbulent. You know, it, it, it's extremely levels of detail on a very thin film. And also these two bubbles will deform, right? The, the, the shape is not constant and the, the shape is not even volumetric. Everything happens on a very thin film that can drastically oscillate and interact with the uh, aerodynamic environment, right? And furthermore, so these, these bubbles, they have very complicated topology. So it's not uh, something happened in a three-dimensional uh, volumetric world, right? It, it, most of the flow details happen in these non-manifold uh, junctions and the membranes that exhibit very complicated topological features, right? So how um, to solve the flow details on this kind of complicated geometry, we still start with the Navier-Stokes equation. So Navier-Stokes equation is the uh, mm, most uh, uh, common uh, mathematical model that we use for basically all of our fluid simulation problems. We solve the same equation, but we need to come up with different uh, strategies to solve for different kind of fluid systems. So here, um, this is a standard Navier-Stokes equation. The first one is the momentum equation, describe F equals MA. Um, on the left side, it's the uh, acceleration of local fluid volume, right? And the, the right side, it describes the fluid force, including pressure, viscosity, and external force. The second equation is um, the uh, mass conservation equation. It it's, uh, basically describes the uh, uh, mass won't be created or be uh, destroyed during the evolution, right? And uh, if we assume the density is constant, this means divergence free, which means the incoming flow and outgoing flow for a small volume must be zero all the time. So uh, in order to solve this equation, a very typical way to discretize this on a computer is to define a fluid body. And this body has a shape and it also has an interface. Um, so we have we must come up with something called discretization. Typically it's a grid. So we have a grid and uh, we put 
samples, physical samples, for examples for the different physical quantities such as pressure on the center of these grids. And we build discrete differential operators. For example, the Laplacian could be the difference between the average among the neighbors and its center. And to put these uh, equations together, uh, to put these uh, local differential operators together, we can build a, a typically a linear system that can help us to solve the Navier-Stokes equation. But typically, um, the most expensive part is to solve a Poisson equation that um, describes the incompatibility condition. Um, yeah, this is a big, uh, big picture of solving a uh, Navier-Stokes equations on a grid discretization. So the problem we are facing is when a fluid volume gets very thin, so what should we do? A very natural uh, way to think about this is to um, get a denser grid, right? When volume gets thin, we need a smaller uh, grid cells. Uh, and But the, the problem is when the volume gets very, very thin, vanishingly thin, you need a vanishingly small grid cell to support your uh, simulation. So this would become very difficult uh, because the grid resolution will be uh, prohibitively high when we wanted to model some thin film, thin fluid like a silk bubble. Because the film thickness of a silk bubble and the size of a silk bubble, so there's a huge gap between these two. Uh, if you wanted to simulate a silk bubble with uh, a standard grid that people use in CFD to require billions of grid cells, which would be infeasible for our current computer. And unfortunately, so these uh, very thin features, they act actually exhibit in all kinds of fluid systems, not just the silk bubble. For example, I just gave you a few examples here, like the sheet rim, the film, the air gap between droplet and uh, the, the water surface and uh, those uh, foam structures. So all these uh, complicated uh, fluid geometries, they have very thin features. So how do we handle these thin features? So that's the first uh, curse of dimensionality problem I'm talking about. We wanted to address this discretization curse of dimensionality. So my strategy is to develop noble uh, data structure, geometric data structures to handle these complexities. Um, yeah, these are the, this is the overview of the data structures I have designed. And I just gave you a, some high level introduction of, uh, of them and see how these uh, data structures are used to uh, solve the fluid simulation problem. The philosophy behind the design of this structure is to come up with the most natural geometric analogs for the fluid features and to evolve them in a dynamic dynamic world to support the fluid evolution. The first, uh, yeah, the first example, this is actually my uh, PhD thesis. It's uh, about using a soup of point, segment, triangle, and the tetrahedron. We put them together, and this data structure is called a simplicial complex. It's a non-manifold geometric data structure, and it can be used to, to uh, discretize uh, fluid volume with different co-dimensional features. So the key uh, idea here is to build a discrete uh, differential operator, for example, the gradient operator based on the uh, geometry, the different types of geometry of uh, the simplicial complex, and then do the calculation uh, in order to solve the uh, partial differential equations. So here's the overview of the pipeline. Um, so the most challenging part is to define this uh, differential operator and also to support the dynamic evolution of these simplicial complex elements to support the dynamic motion of fluid, uh, thin fluid uh, dynamics. So here is a picture, uh, uh, an animation of the, actually I call it the bubble uh, for first version of our soap bubble. Um, it was generated uh, eight years ago and um, everything was solved on the uh, simplicial complex and data structure that I just talked about. And this is a, a 
phenomena, it's a phenomena called the water bell. Uh, you see it's a bell, uh, but it's actually the balance between the internal uh, air volume and the surface tension on this thin film. Um, yeah, that's our the first version, bubble 1.0. Uh, we define the bubble uh, geometric representation, but the topological transition is actually difficult, right? Because we are doing everything on a mesh and to handle the uh, topological transition of a mesh is hard. So then um, this is a second idea. So we wanted to get rid of the mesh. Instead, we want to solve everything on points only. So uh, this is a moving least square perspective of the same problem. So this time we have a collection of particles and we wanted to, for each particle, we wanted to define a local uh, coordinate frame um, by fitting the local shape, for example, the local curvature of these particles and come up with a, um, analytical analytical description, the local geometric description of this uh, shape in the local place. So for, for example, if we use this particle uh, data set to calculate the dynamics of a soap bubble, you can think of each soap bubble, uh, each local place, there is some particles and uh, we can uh, use this analytically fitted uh, local geometry to uh, calculate the surface and the physics. And of course, uh, we build a, a set of uh, differential operators based on these points to support our simulation. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a transition from mesh to particles. And we can further enhance this mesh with a parameter called thickness because we wanted to uh, calculate the evolution of color on this surface, right? Uh, so this is a, a enhanced thickness representation and we use the smooth particle hydrodynamics model, SPH, to uh, represent the uh, thickness evolution on this surface. And here, yeah, you see this is our second version of our simulation. So you see now we have a dynamic topological evolution we also have color evolution and everything happening in a highly dynamic and robust uh, simulation uh, framework. And here, yeah, so you can see these points actually. So this is a rendering of the left side is the rendering and the right side is the actual physical computation we are doing. Um, so for this version, so bubble 2.0, uh, we solve the problem of transition uh, the, the topological transition, uh, but still there are some remaining challenge. The interfacial physics and color dynamics on films. Well, we, we can get some dynamics, but it's actually, if you see the real, uh, real bubble color, it's still, there's some gap because our, it, this version is not uh, vivid enough and you won't see many high frequency color details, high turbulence vortices. So those are still difficult. Even if we get, we use a large number of particles, that's still hard. Uh, and uh, um, so then this is the third version. This is the latest version um, until last year of our uh, bubble simulation work. So this this idea is to further enhance the our capability to simulate dynamic bubble with uh, three focuses, the geometry, the topology, and the flow. So we want to solve all these three features just in one framework. So here is the idea. Um, we design a noble uh, geometric representation called moving or layering Lagrangian particles or MELP. So the idea is to use two sets of particles instead of one to represent uh, the dynamics of the thin film. So for the green particles here, or layering particles, is they are used to give you a stencil of the deforming surface. And we, at the same time, we maintain another set of particles, so the yellow particles here, we call them Lagrangian particles. So these particles are used to track the tangential details, the very detailed uh, flow features on the surface. So both Eulerian particles and uh, Lagrangian particles, they can move and they actually describe the same interface. Uh, the difference is Eulerian particles move along only the normal direction, but the Lagrangian particles move with the full velocity on both normal and the tangential direction. But mathematically, we can actually 
proof that these two particles, they are describing the same interface. So it's eventually they will end up in, on the same surface. Uh, but the, the only uh, difference is uh, they might have some uh, uneven distribution over the surface. So this, this feature can actually, but they actually essentially track the same surface. So this feature can actually help us to design a simulation algorithm that to let the Lagrangian particles to focus on capturing the high frequency uh, flow details and uh, to let Eulerian particles to always give us a robust background uh, discretization to accommodate our PDE solving. And uh, uh, as a byproduct, we, with this design, we can even solve the problem of uh, topological evolution of these bubbles because uh, with a set of particles, like you can imagine for each bubble, we have a set of Eulerian particles and a set of Lagrangian particles. We can describe the junction of these particles in a very robust and uh, easy way. We don't need to handle the, like the non-manifold mesh connectivity like what people did previously, but we just want these particles to get close to each other and it can be used to describe the junction almost for free. So this is the new simulation we got based on this hybrid Eulerian and the Lagrangian particle uh, data structure. And uh, here is a visualization to show that you, if, you, if you have multiple uh, bubbles, we can use multiple particle system to describe their uh, evolution, especially the interaction among the uh, different bubbles and the soap films. You can capture very detailed uh, turbulent flow on the surface and also to let the flow go across different bubbles. And at the same time, we can handle a large number of bubbles. Like here in this example, we show hundreds of bubbles that can be simulated at the same time with our new data structure. Yeah, that's this is this paper. Uh, this, this result is published in our SIGGRAPH 2022 uh, paper. That's our latest version of uh, bubble simulation, so bubble 3.0. We're now doing the uh, so bubbles for zero and uh, um, hopefully uh, we can get some new results for the next year that is mainly focused on the vortex dynamics on the soap bubble. But I think now we have seen enough bubbles so we can maybe we can make a, a pause here and then move on to uh, the next topic, contact, contact dynamics. Yeah, this is a very brief introduction of our uh, research on studying the solid fluid interaction with strong surface tension driven uh, surface uh, interface. So the, the fundamental question we want to answer is how does the heavy object float on the on the fluid surface that it actually has a smaller density than the object? So based on the uh, buoyancy principle, so it, sh it shouldn't, right? But actually, if the object is very small, um, this actually happens in the real world, like in these, uh, in these real world uh, photographies. Um, you see many objects that can actually float on the surface of water because of the uh, contribution of surface tension. Um, so the physical principle behind this is the surface tension will provide ex uh, additional a force that can hold the object. But in the simulation, in order to capture this surface tension, especially the tangential uh, forces that applied can be applied on the uh, solid object. So um, it's not easy because the existing approach does not have the geometric capability to describe this very intricate relation between the surface uh, the water surface and the object surface, and uh, it, they, it doesn't have a, a covering system to solve it. So that's our uh, main focus in this research. We wanted to build a three-way coupling. Usually you heard of two-way coupling system or solid and fluid, but here we add a new, new phase, which is the interface 
um, we want to solve the uh, dynamics of the uh, this three-way coupling system by considering the solid dynamics, the word, bulk of water dynamics, and the interfacial dynamics. And solve them all of them together, or in the same system by by building a novel geometric representation that actually gave us degrees of freedom on the surface, and we can um, put these degrees of freedom in the system and solve the uh, fluid pressure and the velocity of solid and the velocity of the interface at the same time. Um, so um, by building this uh, physical system, it actually enable a array of new phenomena that were we uh, were not able to simulate previously. Like we can distinguish the distinguish the heavy and the light objects on different surface tension interface, and we can uh, mimic the dynamics of a water strider when it jumps on top of water. Uh, we can reproduce many interesting uh, natural phenomena that photographers and the fluid mechanics took photo of based in, in a small world to uh, to capture this uh, surface tension driven process. Um, and we can make comparison to the uh, real world image. Um, yeah, if you have different uh, density or difference of tension uh, coefficient, you actually get different simulation results to decide whether the object will float or it will sink on the water. Yeah, this is uh, one of the uh, images that we're most proud of. It's a, a cherry on water. Um, if we also have cherry on milk to show if the surface tension is not strong enough, then the water surface won't be able to hold the object. And uh, this video is actually uh, very popular also in the community of uh, uh, fluid mechanics. Um, yeah, and there's a, a, a I think it's a review paper in Nature of Physics that actually uh, Cite this paper, um, and uh, yeah, this is a simulation of our water strider. It's not really a, a, a bio uh, water strider yet, but we can show the idea of how some object, some articulated object, can deliver locomotion on a very small uh, surface tension dominant water surface. And after this paper, we did some further study on the hydrophobic and the hydrophilic. Uh, properties in solid fluid interaction problem. I think that's a, a more complicated uh, physical setting. So we wanted to check, we, we wanted to study so how the water surface and the uh, solid surface, they interact with each other. So this is essentially be, uh, determined by the, um, by the interfacial uh, the interfacial coefficient in between different interfaces. For example, there, there is a surface tension parameter between liquid and air. There's a parameter between liquid and solid and a parameter between solid and air. Every two phases, if there, uh, there's a interface exists, then there's some surface tension uh, coefficient. And uh, in our simulation algorithm, we wanted to address how these different coefficients will drive the dynamics of our solid fluid coupling system. So this brings an uh, observation of contact line dynamics. I think that's a very, uh, also very, uh, very popular area in fluid dynamics. We wanted to study how the intersection uh, among different phases, so we call this thing a contact point or in 3D contact line. So how this line evolve over the surface of the object. And the dynamics of this line actually decided the dynamics of our solid fluid coupling system. So we built a um, simulation algorithm to and the geometric data structures to solve this problem. And we got, get a new set of interesting simulations. Sorry. Okay. So, some problem with this side, but this one is good. So you see, uh, uh, is, is this an example showing the escaping from a droplet? Yeah, if it's hydro, uh, if it's hydrophobic, then the surface tension will actually push the object 
out from the droplet. But it, if it's hydrophilic, so it's broken, but actually nothing happened. So it's a static image. So it's just, a, this object will just stay in the, uh, in the droplet. And there are some real world phenomena like the fish uh, uh, trapped in droplet. So that, that's, that's because of the uh, hydrophilic property of the fish skin uh, compared to the water. Oh, sorry, some, some problem with this slide. Yeah, but we also simulated uh, ca uh, capillary origami. So that's another uh, micro scale phenomena uh, to show the dynamics between the uh, substantial and uh, between substantial and the soft, soft body as in film. Yeah, uh, yeah, if you are interested, you can check this video on our website. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, I think that's uh, my, uh, it's my uh, first uh, category of research to, to develop new geometric data structures to solve simulation problem. Next, I will briefly talk about my, uh, our second and third category, the design and discovery. So let's look at design problem first. Uh, typically, uh, if we wanted to design a physical system, instead of just model their forward dynamics, uh, we have uh, we have some observation and we want to come up with some design, right? That's a traditional process. But if you have computer simulation that can help us to uh, enhance this process, uh, so here, here is the way. Uh, traditionally, we do some simulation and then we let human to get involved make some observation and then to improve it next time and run the simulation to see whether that makes sense, the new design makes sense or not, right? Uh, but if, uh, if we want the computer to further help, um, so the, a modern way to do this is to get our physics to be differentiable. Um, typically, we have some simulation system that can calculate the uh, derivative or the gradient direction of our design uh, variable. And we use these derivatives to guide the search of optimal design automatically. So uh, that's a research direction uh, we are pursuing. Um, if we describe this thing in math, um, we can design some uh, minimize, objective minimization problem uh, with uh, some geometric representation and uh, uh, with some uh, system intermediate status. Uh, of course, followed by a few constraints. These constraints include, include the physical constraints and also include the design constraints. Like we have, we're designing some specific physical systems uh, constrained by some specific uh, budget or physical limitation. Um, for, yeah, we are specifically interested in design small scale structures that can mimic the nature of, uh, mimic the property of those bio, uh, structures in nature. Mm, the challenges related to these design problem and uh, still as the same as our simulation uh, problem, they, they have complicated geometry, dynamics, and the, the behavior is very nonlinear and multi-physics coupling. So that's a curse of, uh, that's a curse of dimensionality challenge we're solving in design, which is actually uh, the design space has very high dimensionality. And if we wanted to search for optimal design uh, governed by these complicated physical processes, we need to address the curse of dimensionality here. Um, yeah, so these are our the design problems we are tackling. The key idea is to build a differentiable representation, like the representation that we can easily calculate the gradient to search the uh, physical, geometrical, and the constrained design space. I'll give you a few examples of this. So first example, if we wanted to design a bird beak, if we wanted to design some structure that can actually uh, mimic the interior of this bird beak from first principles, um, what should we do? Uh, here comes, a, oh, sorry. So here comes a, yeah, a, a typical, uh, uh, algorithm called a topology optimization. Due to the time limit, I'm not going to the detail of topology optimization, but the idea is you want to discretize the geometric space with a, a grid, with, with, with a voxelization. And uh, for each uh, local grid cell, uh, it represents a local uh, 
volume of material that you can control. Um, in order to design some very complicated geometry, so we need some very sparse uh, representation that can actually get rid of the representation for most part of the volume, but only keep the important ones. So that's a high level idea. Um, so we design a sparse structure that can uh, only activate the storage of these representations near the important regions and do the calculation of the gradient of these regions based on the principle of topology optimization. So here is a, here are some, oh, sorry. So this one cannot play. Let me check whether the, oh, this one can play. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, let me just play this way. So, oh, no, it's good. Okay. Yeah, um, so these are the uh, structures that we can uh, generate from the topology optimization and our sparse uh, grid structure. Uh, yeah, that's a that's the first example. Um, next example, I'll show you how to design a dragonfly wing. So if we wanted to design some very thin structure, uh, exhibit very organic uh, pattern like a dragonfly wing, um, how do we how do we do this? Uh, actually, this is also a very uh, uh, interesting problem attracted people's attention in uh, biomimetic design and the biological research. Uh, Harbor Group. Uh, systematically study the pattern of dragonfly wing by uh, observing the real world data and uh, analyzing the uh, relation between the dragonfly wing and the Bernoulli pattern. Um, so this, this, this kind of research, uh, I think it gave us a very good insight on why dragonfly wing uh, will grow in this way. Uh, but actually it's not a computational tool that can help engineers to design a real dragonfly wing because there's no specific connection between the Voronoi diagram and the design problem that we have. There's no differentiable representation for this. So we actually solve this problem. So the key idea to uh, build a differentiable representation for a dragonfly wing uh, problem is to build a differentiable representation for our Voronoi diagram. The Voronoi diagram I think it's a very classical uh, geometric data structure that everybody knows. It basically, the, it gives us an interface between the two between two sides if they are the the, the closest one, right? Uh, and uh, um, this is a very discrete uh, representation, right? It tells us for any point it, which region it belongs to based on the distance to different sides. Right. But um, we just uh, change uh, convert this uh, discrete representation to a, a differentiable and continuous one um, by changing the uh, max function to a soft max function. So I think this is also a very typical uh, practice in machine learning community. They really like the soft max function, right? And we here can use soft max to represent some geometry to give us a continuous or differentiable uh, representation of um, Voronoi diagram that uh, as I show here in the in the right figure. So for every point, there's some probability of whether it belongs to region A or region B based on the distance. So it's not a, a hard constraint. It's not a hard uh, if else statement, but it's actually a sum of a softmax function. So uh, why why we do this? Uh, because if we do this, we can easily ca uh, calculate the the boundary in a differentiable way by just a by giving a, a expression of density for every point in the local space, and uh, we can easily define the anisotropic uh, representation by modifying the distance function and then recalculate this the density function. We can easily calculate the uh, derivative, which can help us to build new topolo topology optimization algorithm. So here is the typical uh, result that I would like to show you to use differentiable Voronoi diagram to guide our topology optimization for a, a bone structure. And this is a result to 
design a dragonfly wing structure. Um, it gives us a differentiable description of the high dimensional design space. Well, here is the Voronoi design space that we wanted to explore uh, with our, uh, with gui guided by our uh, gradients. So, um, yes, here, here are some further uh, examples with uh, free boundary optimization. So the key idea is to connect Voronoi, the traditional discrete Voronoi representation with differentiable physics. And uh, quickly show you two more uh, examples. Uh, one is the magnetic thin shell. Well, I'm, so we, we build differentiable physics solvers to uh, solve the magnetic soft material and use that to design a soft uh, robots or ma ma magnetic driven uh, robots and uh, with very complicated uh, control mechanism. All right. This is another animation. You see, this is a control signal and this is a structure and the optimization uh, variables are the um, magnetic a substance distribution over the thin shell. So uh, we, we actually uh, control the uh, design, uh, can control the material distribution and the external uh, control signal to deliver target locomotion of soft body within a multi-physics environment. Uh, Okay, it's already forty minutes, right? So, um, yeah, this maybe I can I can skip these slides. This is a yeah, this is a de another design problem of drone simulation. So the idea is similar. So we wanted to build differentiable operators that can simulate uh, rigid body drones and then do optimization. Yeah, Ping, should should we stop here? Uh, because think, it's forty minutes. I think, I think you should continue. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I, I can. I may spend another ten minutes to talk about the last, uh, mm -hmm. may, maybe less than ten minutes. Yeah. This is a small, uh, small uh, category. A discovery. Um, yeah. For the for the uh, last category of problem, um, uh, we want, as I mentioned earlier. So we know the observation. We, we know the uh physical process, right? Like uh, this observation and uh, we know the material um, property and we want to figure out the governing equation. I think that's a, pro a new set of problems we're solving in recent years. The main motivation is not every physical system has a equation, right? especially for many new physical system or for many very complicated system. It's not easy to give them a mathematical model immediately, right? Uh, then in this situation, so how do we develop simulation algorithms based on the some short term of observation, based on the data? How do we design models that can deliver reliable prediction for the future? So that's a, of course, here is a curse of dimensionality problem because there are many, many different possibilities for the future. If we wanted to fit some model that can deliver some accurate result, we needed to tackle the curse of dimensionality for the future prediction. So that's the uh, meaning of curse of dimensionality in this third category of problems. Um, so I introduced two papers we uh, worked on uh, recently. Um, the first one is to, uh, yeah, to, well, this picture actually shows a high level idea, as I just mentioned, to build a physics simulator without governing equation. So this is the first uh, uh, paper. So how do human perceive dynamics? So we are, we are seeing two types of dynamics on the, on the left side is uh, uh, it's a, a articulated body uh, with a rope connected them, right? And on the right is, uh, let me show this again. On the right, there's a collision between two rigid bodies, and actually there's a hidden environment, hidden uh, 
hidden terrain behind them to hold these two objects. Right? And then for human beings, it's very easy to recognize these two, even without color, even without the connectivity that I draw here. If you just look at points, you can still easily recognize the, the difference between these two. Uh, but how do we let computers to do the same thing? How do we build intu physical intuition into uh, AI algorithm to recognize the different types of physics? Um, basically, we wanted to identify the hidden dynamics. And at the same time, I also wanted to do the long-term prediction based on the uh, based on the observation, like like the 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 problem I show here. For the training, you, you see there are two objects. And uh, for the pre if you, you train your model and uh, then given a new environment, slightly new environment, like now I have four objects, you should be able to predict what's going on here uh, among these four objects and how will they interact with each other in the future. So this seems to be a challenging problem because we don't know what what we can do with to, to describe the dynamics and what we can do to build this the future simulator especially without knowing the governing equation right i think that's a that's something hard um so here is the idea so the first thing is still the representation the structure representation so what kind of uh, representation we can come up with to describe the dynamics to describe the interaction among points so for example, we can build, use force, right? We can use uh, energy. We can use uh, different types of constraints to describe the evolution. So the, the representation we choose was um, constraints. The constraint means the relation, geometric relation among different points, uh, like the um, distance constraint or angle constraint, shape constraint, non-penetration constraint. For example, if two, if two objects are connected to each other, like here for some specific point, they should, the, the distance between these two points should be always be zero, right? And uh, for some 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 piece of cloth, um, there's some angle constraint that this cloth cannot be bended too much or cannot be stretched too much, right? There are all kinds of geometric relationships among these points. And uh, um, we can build these constraints based on a, a uh, very popular uh, simulation algorithm in game industry, which is called position-based dynamics. So this is some algorithm that uh, graphics researchers invented over the past 10 years to develop all kinds of game physics with some very simple programming. So the idea is um, you can describe constraints with math, and then you enforce these constraints with the iterative algorithm. And any kind of constraints can be incorporated into this framework. To, to simulate all kinds of different physics. So that's the achievement people have made in the graphics community. And uh, we wanted to leverage this framework to support our uh, learning algorithm. So basically, so mathematically, so this algorithm can be described as a optimization problem with different kinds of kind of string energy in the objective. So our idea is very simple, just to replace this iterative uh, algorithm with uh, the iterative constraint with a neural network. So it lets the computer to observe the different data and to fit this very small scale neural network and use this neural network to describe the constraint in a traditional position-based dynamics pipeline. So th yeah, this, so uh, here, we summarize the algorithm here. It's actually very simple. If you are familiar with position-based dynamics, you see the only change was now we have a neural representation for the constraint. And um, because this is an iterative method, it's actually a projection process to guarantee that the constraint is that if any kinds of constraint is satisfied in the end. Um, so because of the combination of this new network and the constraint framework, we call this thing, neural projection for that dynamics prediction. Um, so here I just show you some results of this. Because the constraint is a very low dimensional space and uh, it turns out to be easy to be learned by even very small neural network. And we use this constraint plus the position-based dynamics, we can deliver uh, 
simulate, deliver long-term predictions in a very robust way by looking at very few short of data observations. Um, yeah, so and then we can further extend this idea to do fluid system. Like we have observation and we have prediction. And these, these two actually can be connected in a smoothness way. And uh, uh, because we are also leveraging uh, physical priors uh, behind the scene. So here we, uh, instead of using position-based dynamics, we use a, a algorithm called a vortex particle a dynamics method. We actually uh, turned the uh, traditional vortex particle, which is driven by the uh, some physical law called Biot's law. Uh, we we turn these uh, physics-driven particles to neural-driven. We can learn the interaction uh, among the particles by specifying some uh, neural and the differentiable uh, term that can actually calculate the background velocity based on the particle position. And uh, uh, each particle carries some learnable properties like the vortex size, strength, and trajectory. And uh, we can fit these particles according to our observation data. Then you actually fit a simulator. And this simulator can be used to predict very long-term uh, future fluid dynamics. Here, here we show an example. And like given an input video, you can ac actually uh, predict the uh, future dynamics based on this short observation. Um, and we made a comparison uh, between our approach and many existing uh, physics-informed neural network approaches. And it turns out that our because our approach is essentially it's a simulator. It's instead of a neural network data interpreter. So it can give very robust prediction for the future. But most of the uh, other uh, existing approaches fail in this task because they don't have structural representation. They don't have these vortex particles, and they cannot do the prediction in the long term. Essentially, they will fail due to the uh, lack of knowledge for the fluid dynamics itself. OK, um, I think this is my uh, last slide. So um, yeah, today I talked about three types of problems, simulation, design, and uh, discovery. And uh, my main uh, tool set is about the structure representation for different components in these algorithms. And essentially, we wanted to accommodate robust large scale and uh, with complicated geometry simulation design and uh, uh, learning problems that we can solve related to physical systems. Okay, thank you everyone.